I wanted to give you a quick real-time update since things are changing so quickly in this boat. I think we're going to store like when we stock up on beer as we leave the country. That's where it's going to go. Yay! Where's our water tank? Hello. We are working for And there was a little bit of gaps which apparently we cannot have. So I still say that was a team effort on that After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Ah. Present in here. I don't know what's that. That's a new one too. Day three now of water tank work yesterday. Matt spent all afternoon in here sanding his fairing compound to a smooth finish. Yeah, it actually it worked out really, really well. Um, even for that quick fare that I did, which as you'll see, I did not put on a lot. Unlike the areas where Jess is doing, where you have to be able to look down it and it has to look completely flat. This, I don't care if it's flat or, flat or not. The goal was just to knock off those edges so I didn't have to put on a ton of fairing compound, which means I didn't have to sand off a lot of fairing compound either. Uh, went through, quickly sanded it yesterday. Unfortunately, I did sand through back down to foam in one area, so I had to put a patch there. The big idea was, again, just to make sure that there was no nooks or crannies that bacteria or whatever can form in and uh, I can't easily clean. Today's project now is to apply a barrier coat to all surfaces, so I'll do a couple of layers of that. And then the final step will be adding that protected that FDA approved uh, epoxy sealant over the top of everything. So then it's a nice, safe, potable water thing. And then we don't have to worry about any place that could be leaks or um, any water absorption into the core at all. Uh, I think it's a, a kind of that belt and suspenders. We're going a little bit above and beyond, but it should make for a very good and durable water tank. So one thing we haven't previously discussed is our plan now has changed. This tank itself, so each one of these tanks were about 60 something gallons a piece. We decided that it really doesn't make sense to not have more capacity. We don't need to fill them up all the time. So we want to be light and when we have the water maker all set up, um, we, we don't need that full capacity. But when we do, we found out that with the water maker, it's really nice to be able to make fresh water in the ocean before we go into a harbor area. So the idea is to fill up these tanks completely when we're getting into a harbor, when we're going to be in an anchorage, and then that way we don't have to worry about trying to make water when it's not so clean. Questionable um, water. The questionable water, <laughs> yep. So the idea is we're going to end up raising these. So they'll get, we'll bond on this section. There's another little that goes up there. But what that's going to do is that will add 20 gallons per, per water tank that we're adding additional capacity to it. Problem with that is, as you can see, it makes it very limiting as to how I can reach in there. So that's why we're attacking this project right now, is I need to get these fared and painted before we start that process of adding this section. So it's gonna, again, like everything else, it's gonna be multiple steps over and over again. The idea is to get this all painted so it's a perfect surface down here. Then I will glass in these upper sections and once that's done, now I only have to paint and fair in this little upper section, this, this line, and I don't actually have to be able to reach down into the bottom easily. So, stage, stage step, step three, three of stage one. of 300 for just the water tank. Yep. <laughs> so, not usually much today. Da -da 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 -da.
now. Pretty thin but smooth, it sounds like. Yes, very smooth, which is good because that's the whole idea with this. Get a smooth finish. Uh -huh. Easy to keep clean. I wanted to give you a quick real time update since things are changing so quickly in this boat. I think the last time we were in this master vanity, you saw that I was starting to bear out the back here. So that is all done now. All of the coves are in. It's going to have to be fine-tuned a little bit. But what Matt is going to be working on today is kind of getting like the forward face of this on. And so the toilet's going to sit right here. That will kind of be the back. And then this is the bulkhead, which will be the aft-facing end of our countertop, which will have the sink in it. And then up above, too, there is another piece that needs to go in. And I don't know if I can back up far enough from where I'm at right now to give you like a full view, kind of. So where these two pieces are, is the sliders are going to go in the top and the bottom. So the two doors will go between those spaces up there and down there. And, yep, then we can get those started. And if you look, I started fairing the back of the shower. Well, I got to stay in part of it before going and adding more. But what a big difference it makes when you start to take away like a green wall that big and uh, start making it white. So then now, because Matt is working in this area, I am transferring over to the forward bunk. And we'll quick take a look there too. All right, so walking in here, I think you saw the last real-time update. Matt was getting ready to install these shelves. So I still haven't really touched them yet. But what I did do yesterday is sand and start adding our fairing compound to the forward side. And look, we've added steps now to get into the bed. That's really fun. And we cut out the opening to get forward access to this bunk because isn't this just so much storage under here? That is going to come in super handy when we're cruising. I think we're going to store like when we stock up on beer as we leave the country. That's where it's going to go. And for the ceiling on these sides, we still don't know for sure if we're going to do uh, liners or fairings. So we're holding off on these. But this support bulkhead here, um, we actually cut it out a little bit wider. If you saw in our mistake episode up there, um, we had originally cut it too low and had to add back on. So now we just took that extra um, height back. But we will be doing some kind of like backboard there, but it probably needs to be fared around the edges. So this is mainly going to be my job over the next week or two is just working in here, fairing out these cabinets, fairing out that bulkhead fairing out the headboard area, and actually bulkhead five, which is going to be the door entrance into this guest bunk. All right, well, since I seem to be the fairing queen of the boat, in addition to fairing smooth all of the surfaces that aren't going to have veneers or linings, another one of my jobs recently is to um, fill kind of like edges of surfaces to make sure that when we do finish them, they'll be nice like our water tanks. So before we can glass in the next upper section, he had to cut out the holes for what would be our inspection ports, which we just got them in from Vetus. They're really cool. And then what he did once he used a hole saw to get that size that he needed, he kind of like took out the core around it. So then it was my job to fill it with bearing compound and then smooth it back down to that perfect edge. From what you can see here, I went through and I kind of overfilled in some areas so that it would allow me to go back and bring it back to this edge here. Unfortunately, there were a few areas too where um, like Matt dug in too far when he was trying to take the core out and so I've lost that edge. Kind of tried to get it back with tape. And what I've been doing earlier is just kind of like using my finger and some loose sandpaper coming off of any number of our sanders and just kind of going over these edges to get a smooth surface. So I've got one that's pretty much ready for inspection and you can see well this camera doesn't have the best focus on close-ups but that I've gone through now and fared that back to a smooth surface so instead of messing with the inspection ports just yet I'm going to take the hole saw that was used and see how close we are for me faring that back to a smooth surface as right, you can tell here's a pretty big guy so 
and I think it's fitting in there pretty well. I don't know how exact it needs to be. So when I just run my fingers along the surface here, I can feel some like small bumps and things. But when we bring this over, we can make sure, yeah, I see like there's kind of a gap right there. But I just think that's the way that Matt cut it. So I'm not gonna take blame for that one. Could be my fault, we'll see. But while I'm waiting for Matt to finish a glassing project in one of our forward sail lockers, also known as the Hull of Fame with all of our patrons names, um, I'm just going to kind of get generally started on this one and then we'll see exactly how perfect we need that surface to be for those inspection ports to go on. Ugh, it's still a little gummy. I hate when that happens. So I decided to take a quick coffee break, went to the office, found Matt in there chatting with some of the guys, brought him back here and asked him about what I had already sanded so far. You know, I told him that I put that um, hole saw in there and there was a little bit gaps, which apparently we cannot have. Um, although I was following the lines. So I still say that was a team effort on that um, Because we do still have that hole saw on loan from Vetus, I'm gonna tape it up with some packing tape and then set it in the space and then backfill any of that gap with more filling. And so hopefully I can just like pop that out. I've got my perfect circle that I need. Maybe just like a light sanding to smooth the surface down. Call it good. Just tape it your leg? No, it just slid down. Okay. And then I got to grab sharp pointy edges. Because temperatures were still below the necessary 60 degrees, I brought the boards inside the master head which had already been sealed off and warmed up with one of our radiator heaters. My first attempt had me filling the gaps using a tongue depressor, trying to push the filler down as far as possible. My plastic squeegee was initially just to clean up the excess, but then I realized that sharp corners could help me press the filler even further down. The next day, I decided to switch from the hole saw, which was very hard to remove once the filler had cured, and went to the actual inspection port ring itself. Because the gaps were so narrow, I had to fill one side, let it cure, and then flip the board over to get the remainder. And once that had cured, I tried to fill small gaps in the center using just my fingers. A longer process than it probably should have been, but it's through your mistakes that you learn how to do it better next time. The weather is officially warming up, spring is coming, and now we can finally do the inside of the water tanks. Still gonna put heaters in here to make sure that it does cure 100% properly, but I wanted to at least have that base um, warm enough. Right now it's getting close to 70 degrees. As I'm applying that final finish to the inside of the water tanks. This is the one that's the FDA approved finish. It's a potable water tank um, coating. This one is what we used on Elements, um, same product here. And the reason why I'm using it is because I know it and I've used it before, but it's the negative with it is it's designed for larger water tanks. It would be an issue if you are putting this immediately into use. But the benefit that we have is we can do a very, very long post cure on this. So elevated temperature, we can rinse it plenty of times and we're probably a year and a half, year maybe, away from using these in general. So it's gonna give a very good long time for it to cure. So not anything I'm endorsing at all for, for anyone using it, but it has worked well for us in the past and that is why I chose it. So this is just called Bar Rust uh, 233H and it's a potable water tank coating. It works well for this type of application. This will go on top of the barrier coat that I've already applied. That's protecting us from the barrier coat itself. But I can't put the lid on yet because I need to get these angled pieces in place that are where the actual lid is gonna go as well. But I need to get the bottom of the tanks themselves painted because it's just too hard for me to reach over. Once those get in place, it's gonna be too hard for me to reach over and get to the bottom. Once those, those little 90 degree flanges get put into place, then I'll have to come through and, and touch that up.
A few weeks earlier, we had made more of our 90 degree flanges with a combination of our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass and our 1208 matte backed fiberglass. Having already received a coat of the epoxy paint on the insides, Matt was now adding our total boat thickened resin to adhere them to the edges of the water tanks. Because the lid of the tank would be bonded on top of these, we needed to make sure they were all level as they went in. Of course, my favorite parts of these projects are treating them like a carnival game, where I get to guess exactly how much resin we'll use. Where the prize is? Well, either not having to run below deck to make more, or not ending up with waste. Well, getting ready to install the lids, the tops of our tanks, our water tanks here, and wanted to kind of show this how this is going to work. In between, we have where that baffle is going to be. And then, of course, the outside area, which will get glassed into the bulkheads and into the webs on the side and across the front. So really a strong structure here. Jess has gone through the area that I cut out, gone through and filled that, so it is a good size. But this is the coolest thing. So this is our first Vetus item we are officially installing. This is one of their inspection ports. Now, these are kind of a universal thing. The gasket that it comes with uses can be used for diesel, can be used for gasoline, can be used for um, waste and water tanks. So it's a kind of a universal setup here. But what it does, normally the way that these uh, inspection ports work is you need to drill a hole, cut a hole in there, and then install like the lower flange piece. Sometimes it's a hinged item, sometimes it's two separate pieces, or sometimes you actually need to do it before you enclose the tank in. The way Vetus has done it is they have this gasket, it's a compression gasket. So you cut the hole to just the right size. Then this item slides in. That's that fit in here. And then when you tighten in these four hex heads or the Allen wrenches here, that compresses and pulls this tight and actually tightens up that gasket. The gasket then spreads out and fills in and presses against, holding this whole thing into place, creating a nice watertight structure, real simple, real easy. But the cool thing about it is, so one of these will be just an inspection side. The other side has this piece that goes in its place. So you pop this center section out of this ring, pop this item in, screw that on, and now this has your water fill, has your vent, has your uh, the draw where that comes through. There's another little attachment piece, a, a hose that attaches here to draw from the tank itself. You have additional ports in this, so you can install the things like the water maker feed. So when we have that installed, that will feed in here and go directly into the tank. You have the right size here to be able to put in a, a gauge, um, a sensor for the gauge. That's all done for you. But so once that's oriented, again, you can still pull this whole thing then back out. Pull that out, get access, use that as your inspection port or a clean out port. So we can go through and clean what will be the inside of the tank. Plop it back down, tighten it up, and you're good to go. It is one of the coolest products. And this is the thing that Jess and I were really excited to get our hands on when we went and visited Fetus. I can't even describe it is how well it's actually built once you feel it. This is solid aluminum structure, aluminum on the bottom as well. So really, really overly built. It is crazy strong. So yeah, kind of excited to install these. We have one here, one there. And then on that side, we'll do the same thing over there and just a really cool setup. 
And these inspection ports are a great option for anyone that has uh, some type of fuel tank, whatever type of tank, and does not have an inspection port or a way to actually clean out the inside of the tank, because they work with metal, they work with fiberglass, they work with plastic tanks, anything that you just need to be able to get good access, and you want to get in there. We always did it with our water tanks. We'd do that every single year, get in there and scrub them out. Um, and then the fuel tank was usually probably every other year, but it's nice to be able to get in there and see the condition of everything, and you really need an inspection port for that. So this is something that you can retrofit into a boat that doesn't have anything. Now that our flanges had fully cured, we could go back and put the lids in place. This process was more or less the same as earlier. Matt would still use our thickened polyester resin to coat the flanges, and once they were fully covered, the lid would be placed on top. It would be firmly pressed into place and later glassed from the outside. Yay! Yay, water tank! Hello. Hey, I'm Yep. Structural as well as light. Uh -huh.